there, it's Natalina coming to you from Natalina's Kitchen, where we have been teaching authentic Italian food culture since 2011. And now as we're moving our classes fully online, we want you to have the most success. So if you're planning on taking a bread making class or a pizza making class, it's very important for you to understand these terms because you will hear them often. Okay, so first of all, if you are making a dough, whether it's for pizza or for bread or focaccia, you need to determine first whether it's a direct dough or an indirect dough. Okay, so I'm gonna explain the difference. So basically a direct dough is your classic flour, water, yeast, and salt mixture left for a couple of varying different rising times or fermentations also as they're called, which we'll be explaining, okay? Now on the other hand, let's switch sides here, an indirect dough is when you have flour, water, salt, but you incorporate one of these other pre-doughs or pre-fermentations, okay? We're gonna get into these, what they are exactly, but in an indirect dough, you're using either a bigger a poolish or a sourdough starter, okay? Then you're also looking at rising times and different fermentations. So right off the bat, your simple classic direct dough or the indirect dough, which a lot of people would argue produces more complex flavors and uh, better results. But in a pinch, a direct dough works just great. So let's now look at these terms. Okay, now moving to our pre-doughs um, that are used in the indirect doughs, you have a choice of a sourdough starter, a poolish, or a bigger. And now let's see what the difference is. So a sourdough starter is basically a starter that is usually equal parts flour and water, and over quite a number of days, up to a week, you um, attract natural yeast, and you will then have prepared a sourdough starter that could be used for your bread or pizza dough. Okay, now the other two pre-doughs are, one is the Polish, which is uh, a Polish name for this pre-dough, okay? And basically, rather than natural use, you're using commercially prepared yeast, just a little bit, just to help it out, um, as well as flour and water, typically equal parts, and you're gonna let it ferment for typically about 24 hours, and we're gonna look at that term fermentation in a minute, minute as well, okay? A poolish is fairly liquid, and it can also be called a sponge, okay? So in my pizza, um, Napolitana style pizza, I like to use a poolish because it also lends a beautiful flavor because of the long uh, fermentation process of the pre-dough, okay? Now we're gonna get into fermentation as well. But you also have a choice of using a biga, and the biga is the Italian term um, very similar to a poolish, but it is a little more solid. So it's still considered a sponge, but it's not a one-to-one um, -one measure of flour and water. It's more solid, okay? Um, and we also do use a little pinch of yeast as well to um, get it fermenting and growing. Typically, that would be over 24 hours as well, okay? So for an indirect dough, you're kind of doing a little work ahead and you're making one of these three to then incorporate into your dough um, for whatever it is you're making. Now, a couple of terms that we need to discuss here as well is number one, fermentation. Now, typically a longer fermentation would require a stronger flour or a flour that's higher in gluten. And the reason is, is during fermentation, so it's basically a chemical process, it gets all bubbly and, and um, makes gases. As you see it sit for 24 hours or more, you'll see it, it almost comes alive, similar to a starter or poolish or bigger, because basically um, there's some reactions in there to what's happening. I'm not gonna get all science on you. Basically, it's gonna create a lot of flavor and that actual chemical reaction or that scientific process breaks down the gluten, okay? So that's why you want to use a higher gluten flour. So with my uh, Napolitana pizza, when we prepare the poolish, which ferments for 24 hours, we use a bread flour or a strong flour that has a lot more gluten in it. And that is the reason. And it's also the reason why a lot of folks will say when they go to Italy, 
um, the pizza's so light, and even if they have a gluten intolerance, not an allergy, a gluten intolerance, they find that they can easily consume Italian pizza, and breads for that matter, and it's because of this long fermentation process. It actually starts to break down the gluten, and it makes a beautiful flavor and a really light, airy dough, okay? We're also gonna talk about hydration here as well. So hydration is simply the ratio of water to flour, okay? So a really high quality light dough is typically a hydration of 70% or higher. So what that means is, is if you have one kilo or a thousand grams of flour, you would use 700 grams of water, okay? So it's basically 70% hydration. Now, the more hydrated the dough is, so if it's over 70, such as 75 or 80, the harder it will be to manage because it'll be a very soft dough, okay? So there's kind of a trade-off. It's harder to manage, but you'll get a lighter, airier dough the more hydration that you have, okay? So for beginners, it's always nice to start at about 70%, and then you can just gradually add more water to make a higher hydration of your dough, whether it's pizza or bread, and um, basically as your skill improves, you'll find that you're better able to manage those higher hydrations. So these are all terms in order to be successful with one of our online pizza or bread classes. You need to be familiar with this. So there's one more thing we're gonna discuss, and that's flour. Okay, last but not least, let's talk about flour and gluten, okay, in terms of bread and pizza making. So basically, Gluten is simply the protein uh, that we would find in the flour or in the grain that was used to produce the flour, okay? So when flour and water mix together, there's a reaction and that creates the gluten, okay? A lot of people know gluten because there's people that can't have gluten, celiacs, right? Okay, so how does that tie into our flours for pizza or bread? Let's look at the two major types of flours that I would use in my bread making or pizza making classes. One being the double zero Italian flour, okay? That is simply very finely milled flour, okay? If something is called double zero, that does not automatically categorize it in terms of how much gluten is in the flour, but rather how finely milled it is. In Europe, and in Italy in particular, a, a flour can be milled anywhere between a two, two, a one, a single zero, and a double zero. Okay, two being the coarsest, double zero being the finest. And that is the popular flour that's used to make pizza, our thin crust wood-fired pizzas, okay? Now, a double zero flour that finally melts um, can also have different uh, percentages of glutens depending on whether it's used to make um, pizza or pasta or focaccia or whatever, okay? The pizza flour that I prefer for my thin crust pizzas comes in at a 12.5% gluten, okay? So that is uh, somewhere in a mid-range, okay? Now, a bread flour is much higher in gluten uh, than your all-purpose flours, than your pastry flours, and in this case, in this particular pizza flour. A typical bread flour, which is also called a strong flour or a hard flour, um, can come in as high as 14% in gluten, okay? So that's anywhere from 12 to 14%, and that's why I was telling you earlier that a bread flour is typically used for a very long fermentation because the gluten breaks down. If you were to use something like a 12.5% and do like a three, four day fermentation, it might break it down too much um, that it wouldn't have a beautiful mouthfeel and a beautiful texture, okay? So there's different schools of thought, whether it's better to ferment the poolish or the bigger, um, and then when you actually create the dough, do a shorter fermentation or do a direct dough, mix it all from the beginning and let it go for a very long fermentation. And often, if it is going for a longer fermentation, it'll be using bread flour or a higher percentage of bread flour, okay? So 
These are all the terms that I think you should have a pretty general understanding in order to be successful at bread and pizza making. So good luck in your project and we'll see you in the kitchen. And don't forget to tap on the tomato to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing.